GoPro, GoPro, GoPro. When you hear that word, you probably think adventure, extreme sports, or will I ever have a life interesting enough to need one? Maybe that's just me. But with the Hero 7 Black, the company seems to be thinking more along the lines of Instagram than adrenaline. I've been reviewing GoPro cameras since the HD Hero 2, which was something that you basically tolerated putting on your helmet. But the camera's come a long way since then and can turn its hand to multiple photographic tasks. But there are still occasions when you want to reach for a DSLR or a phone over a GoPro. But with the Hero 7 Black, you might just find yourself reaching for this little guy a little bit more, and that is a big deal. I'm gonna tell you why. So what exactly is new here? Well, don't let the color change fool you. On the inside, this camera is almost identical to the Hero 6, which sounds like bad news. But there are a couple of things that this camera can do which the Hero 6 can't, and depending on your needs, that might make all the difference. Firstly, and bear with me here, there's more RAM, which if you've ever upgraded your own PC at home, will know can make the world a difference and should certainly allow this camera to do things that the other one couldn't. One such thing is stabilization. Now the Hero 5 was the first GoPro to come with any form of stabilization at all, but it wasn't really up to scratch. The Hero 6 upped the game, but it was still a little bit jittery and occasionally easy to push it past its limits. The Hero 7 Black, it is much improved. The stabilization is still electronic rather than optical, but GoPro's selling that as an advantage and there's no more hard wall where the lens can't move anymore. But in more practical terms, it just means that the stabilization is smoother, it's better all round. Basically allowing me to do something like this for the first time in a handheld GoPro. GoPro's calling it gimbal-like, and I maybe wouldn't go that far, but for an in-camera solution, it is pretty good. And it's certainly on par with what you might be used to from your iPhone or your Pixel camera. Also, unlike a gimbal, which stabilizes the Horizon 2, all your carves and turns will follow you, arguably making for more dynamic videos. The GoPro is an action camera at heart, after all. For me, this one feature makes a huge difference. Using the Karma Grip is nice, but it requires you to be doing something where the Karma Grip isn't getting in the way. You can mount those things on helmets, but who really wants to do that? Being able to ditch the grip and still get smooth video means a lot less of my footage is heading straight to the trash folder. Even being able to record the simple task of walking, typically the Achilles heel of GoPro cameras, is a huge bonus. And now that you don't need the grip, that means that the USB port is free, which means that you can plug in an external microphone. Smooth video, good audio, GoPro, you're really spoiling us. We get it, it has better stabilization, but what else? Well, for the first time ever, GoPro finally has decent support for live streaming. You'll still need your phone, but now you can broadcast live to Facebook or use an RTMP stream to broadcast your activities direct to the world. Other services like YouTube will be coming to the camera soon, but it's still a huge win for those who want to use the GoPro outside of just action sports or maybe even as a reporting tool. Okay, there's a theme here because the next thing I want to talk about is ugh, vertical video. Yes, it is a reality of the modern world and something that GoPro seems to be aware of because now you can just hold your camera here at 90 degrees and it will automatically flip the video into that mode, which means that you can instantly share it without another step in the way to your Instagram stories. Another trick borrowed from your phone is the ability to shoot time warp videos. Time warp is basically GoPro's name for a hyperlapse. You've been able to shoot time-lapse videos with GoPros since day one, basically, but the difference here is that they're stabilized and the camera is clever enough to make it smooth and slick. There is at least one visual enhancement on the Hero Black 7 though, and that is Superphoto, which again is GoPro's marketing term for HDR. Like stabilization, it isn't the first time that we've seen that on a GoPro camera, but this time again, it is much improved. You may remember a darker time when GoPro cameras did not have an LCD display, when navigating was basically a series of clicks and swearing. Some of the newer GoPros came with a menu where you could swipe and use gestures to navigate. And the Hero 7 has changed that again a little bit. It's only a subtle difference. It's a lot more like a mobile phone. Though. Now you swipe left to right to swap between camera, time-lapse mode and video mode but it is a subtle but important improvement. But what difference do all these modes make to the good old GoPro battery life? It's never been as much as we'd like, and it's basically about the same this time around. There's no significant drop or improvement over the Hero 6. Also, you might be lamenting that this is still only 4K 60 frames per second, but if you need to shoot more than that, then you probably need a different camera anyway. So who is this camera for? 
So if you were about to pull the trigger on a Hero 6, then the Hero 7 is a no-brainer. At $399, it's exactly the same price and it has a little bit more to offer. The real question is if you're gonna upgrade from the 6, and that's a much tougher call. If you don't need stabilization and you don't care about any of the social features, then maybe you stick with the 6. But if you do and you want a live stream, then this Hero 7 is gonna be great for you.